My dear respectful brothers and sisters, today I would like to just to touch a point, which is that uh, our, in our occasion, it is that um, we are at the end of the year where the school year is ending. So um, we have our universities, our high schools, we are go going to holidays. So when we are going for holidays, and then what should we do? It is this, it comes a summer time. So in the summer time is that, it is the time when people usually um, take rest from their, the hardship of the job that they have been doing throughout the year and the difficult studies in which, in which they were so busy with for the, throughout the year. So this is the time we relax, and this is the time we re-energize ourselves. That you have been in winter, you were so tired, so fatigued, and you, were, you became very weak, uh, very weak, and uh, uh, pretty, and so frustrated. But now, when it becomes summer, then you get uh, some uh, how you become relaxed. But then there are many other issues which always are in line with this and uh, we should avoid that. Usually what happens is that during the holidays, uh, if you observe those who, the youth who um, engage into um, activities that's anti-social activities, criminality, um, drugs, and such kind of bad things. Most of them, they, the time they start, if you observe, it becomes when, uh, during the holidays. Because that is the holidays when they have their spare time, and that's when they engage with others, and those others are the ones who can um, influence them to the wrong path. Therefore, we have to highlight as Muslims, especially the youth, what should we be doing in the holidays? How should we benefit from the time, uh, the holiday times? My dear brothers and sisters, this issue is, uh, we have to look at it, that uh, in the form of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us an assignment and those assignments we have are limitless and endless. And they are always, we have to keep doing it, uh, the assignment, persistently, continuously, and consistently, all uh, in our lifetime. <laughs> of course, we are human beings. We get tired of doing something. When we are, say, studying, if you ever involved in anything, be it physical job, mental job, something you are doing, and after a few hours, you will be so tired of it. You feel bored to continue that. So you, what you need, you need to take a break. So that when you take the break and you come back, you will come back with strong energy. You are fit that time and then you can resume your job or your studies and uh, then you can do it vehemently, vehemently and strongly and actively. You become somebody who is vigorous at that time. So how that, you know, what Islam says about that? Let's look at the, this issue from Islamic perspective. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows our situation. He knows how we feel how weak we are, and He is the one who created us weak. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in His Quran, let's pick up Surah Al Nisa, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يريد الله أن يخفف عنكم وخلق الإنسان طعيفا. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes to make easy for you whatever you are doing and because mankind was created weak and we we are in weak situation all the time we are very weak so because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that we can't tolerate doing uh, something uh, many hours many days many months and years we need to take a break then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this permission to take a break but how do we take the bread? That's what we want. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us, Wala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Do not die until you are in the state of Islam. So all the time you must be in the status of being Muslim and acting as Muslim. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us, Wa abud rabbaka hatta yaatiya kal yaqeen. Keep worshipping your Lord until the certain uh, in, inevitable certainty comes to you until the truth, which is the death, comes to you, keep worshiping Allah. And then Allah is saying to us also, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّةِ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I haven't, I have not created for the, the mankind and the jinn except that they might worship me. When it is that, and Allah is giving us permission to take a break, how can we uh, reconcile this to? It is this way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us breaks, which are not yearly, not every year once, not every year one month or so and so. Like mostly we, when we are in the job, the rules, the, the uh, international law, says that when you are working you must you always you must get one month off. So you are getting off the job one month in the year. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has managed this. Allah is showing us another form of time management. The time management of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts from hours, not year, and it goes all the way to year. Uh, let us look at the, this way in the daytime. In the daytime, at least we have five breaks in the daytime and one long break, which is uh, the time we sleep in the nighttime, is a full break. But before that, in the daytime when we are awake, we have five times uh, of break. And those five times are the five times of the prayer. When we are performing the prayers, we are in bread. How? It is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us, uh, if you look at another verse, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, خُذُوا زِينَتَكُمْ يَا بَنِي آدَمَا خُذُوا زِينَتَكُمْ عِنْدَ كُلِّ مَسْجِدٍ وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا when, when Allah is saying to us, take your yeah, nice clothes to every masjid so that means every prayer you have to go for you have to take a break to go for a prayer and when you are in the prayer you are dressing nicely you are making wudu so you are cleaning yourself you wash your face and then you wake up you are so sleepy so tired and you wash your face then you feel fresh you wash your hands and feet, it become more fresh. So that's bread. And again, you come, you dress well, you feel morally well and in good condition. And you perform the prayer. And when you perform the prayer, it is always related to uh, when you are taking your food also, the lunch time. Allah is saying here, and it's health wise too, that you go for prayer and kulu washrabu eat and drink. So then, this look at this, you pray Salah to God, you refresh yourself, and then when you re refresh yourself and you are in that good situation, you have taken your lunch. When you took your lunch, then you are fit. Now, you can start your work again, you can come back to your desk, study desk, and continue your studies, and you are fresh. You can do a lot of you can perform well in that situation. 
that is one side. Okay, so you continue. All the five prayers are like that. The asr time is a refreshment, a snack time, and then you perform the prayer and you continue. So the five times prayer or in the daytime, you consider them as five breaks. And in the nighttime, you take a break long hours and sleep. That is one time management made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us. So we have to look at that, that's daily activities. Let's come to monthly activities. The monthly activities that we have, weekly activities, eh? weekly activities is Friday sermon. Every Friday we come for the khutbah, and when we come for the khutbah, that khutbah is it's a break for us. Actually, in the Islamic way, uh, in the day, the day of Friday, it, there's no prohibition that you work. So you keep working, but you have to come for the prayer and um, at least an hour before the prayer time starts. And then we take at least two hours to, uh, to get the sermon, the Friday sermon. So that is a break because it is a new initiative, something new that you are doing and you are forgetting the past hardship. So when you are in a toil job, very difficult job, the easiest thing to do to take a break is to change your way of doing that. Say you are, you are a mechanic, you are a handman. So you are working as a mechanic and you are tired physically and mentally you are thinking how to put together these methods and so on. So you are both mentally and physically tired. What you can do, you come out and do another job which is related to other part of your ability, not the physical one. Say you are working, going to somewhere, helping others, and so on and so on. And then you come back and you are fresh when you come back. And monthly it is that. Annually, you see the Ramadan, when it comes, then we take fresh, new energy. And then you take the Eid, it's new energy. And all of that you boost yourself up from time to time. <coughs> That is how we make uh, uh, take our holidays. My point is that in these holidays, to avoid our youth, and even some elders, it happens that they may go to the wrong way and take the holidays as non-believers take their holidays or non-religious people, how they do their holiday, that's what they do. And when they are doing that, they come back with new wrong eye culture, wrong perception. They may come back and somebody may be nice throughout the year and uh, in the holidays that person has gone, say they went with their friends, they went, to, they have taken a trip to the seashores, to another country, they were in, uh, in, always dealing with people who were, who have no clue of what Islam is all about. And those people, you were with the people who are like half naked, drinking, dancing, going to clubs, and all that. And then, you may start smoking from them, at least. And when you come back, you are already addicted to smoking or drinking, which you have taken it from the holidays. So then, what do we need? How should we avoid that? The best way to avoid is simply to follow Allah's instructions and guidelines, which are, you take your breaks daily, as I said, and monthly, and yearly, and whenever you are doing something, if you become tired of that, do something else, which is also your requirement. It is still your duties, but in, you are doing it in a different way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَنْصَبْ وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرَغَبْ And if you, Allah says, if you are relieved of doing something good, then strive to another thing so that to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say when you, are, you, you pray, you finish the prayer, then you are doing something else, which is also mandatory of you to work, to work and make money, it's mandatory, and you are doing it, then it's another job, 
it's another ibadah and still you are taking bread. Everything is that balance. It's from you will have also time to relax and to take a bread and give yourself uh, you, you have to take care of yourself too. So or like say some hours you are in your house, taking a shower, cleaning yourself and cleaning your clothes and you are giving your yourself and your body the, uh, the height that they, you owe them. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in hadith, Ya Handala, sa'at wa sa'at. Oh Handala, one hour and another hour means do something an hour and the other hour do something else. It is that. So you take the breaks in that way and it is, uh, it, that's how we make our breaks, our holidays. And then, this is uh, another system we are in, which is that we take break those months in the summertime from the studies, from work and so on. Then, how should we take advantage of that, the holidays? <coughs> it is a common sense that we should keep doing something better than what we were doing before. Because always you must develop yourself and do better than what you were doing. So in the holidays, you take advantage of it and keep doing some other stuff. Be you're working, you're doing business, you're making here and there whatever you are doing, or you are studying more. As if you are a student, and still you want to increase your knowledge, you can study something which is other than what you were studying in these schools. And that can help you well. I, I think I have to mention here this, that uh, my, to take an example myself, I have written over 15 books in the holidays only. For the last 20 years, I was taking whenever it is holiday, I used to, I always, I go into my home, lock the home and keep writing. And I have published all those books. So in the little time, we don't ever undermine, we don't belittle the small hours that you have. Only one, the eight days, national holidays, if you just go to your room and find something, that's fine. If you go to work and make money, it's fine. So you develop yourself you know, economically, or you develop socially, you interact with the people and learn even people who can accompany you in the good situation, in the good um, habits and so on. So it is that you must doing something good and living that something good to another something which is good. From good to good, from good to better, and from better to the best. That's all you are doing. You keep doing all that. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters, the topic is that we have to take advantage of the holy days. Mostly this, this is going to the youth and those who are in the universities and the colleges and high schools to do something in these days with holidays instead of going with people who are not righteous people who may uh, lead you to the uh, straight path so then you take advantage from this time I mean, it's either you are pro producing something making money studying other things that are all increasing your improving your knowledge and so do something else Never be uh, like. Uh, never spend your time uh, while uh, you are doing nothing. It means your time is very, very crucial, very important. Every hour is counted. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in Hadith: "Nimatani magbun, magbun fi ma kathirun min al-nas al-sihha wal firaq there are two bounties, two professionists, which are blessed, but most of the people do not know. They are the health 
and uh, when you are free, free time, the spare time you have. Your spare time, there is no spare time, but I mean, it's when you, uh, you have free time. And that free time, that means it's not a free time in which you are doing nothing, but you are doing something different. Brothers, can you come forward? There are bones here. So, and that, we look at this, the siha and fra, the, the time when, later on when you grow up, and you are a senior, you may come to the hours back, and the days and ages, and you will think, had I done this and this when I was at that age? It is now, then that you take the, uh, this opportunity to do something which is useful for you, useful for your family, useful for your community, useful for your nation, and useful for the entire world. <coughs> and think always widely. And always, you have to look at this, the timing. There is another hadith which is uh, uh, giving, uh, elaborating this hadith, where Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Take advantage of five before another five comes to you. What are those five? They are shababaka qabla haramika. Your youthhood before you become uh, an old man or old woman. And your health, when you are in health, before you become sick. And your, when you are well, when you can pay sadaqa, and before you become poor. And when you have time to do something before you become very busy and your life before your death. So you, you take advantage of all these fibers before these fibers come to you. And you have to know your time is counting. And uh, second by second. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in another hadith, لا تزال قدماء عبد حتى يسأل لا تزال قدماء عبد في يوم القيامة حتى يسأل عن أربعة Nobody will move forward, backward, sideward and move his leg to anywhere in the day of judgment until he or she is asked four questions. So the four questions that we will be asked in the day of judgment are here now. So you have the tip of your exam. These are Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, An Umri Fima Afna, his age before uh, uh, his age, what he spent. What did you spend in your age? And his knowledge, what he did with. And about his property, his mouth, his uh, money, how he received it and how he spent it. So your income source is, will be questioned. You will be questioned about your income source and also expenditure sources. How do you spend? Did you spend it extravagantly, lavishly, and or in the wrong way, or did you spend it in the right way? Well, and this me here, Fima Abla, and about his body, how did he use this body? How did he finish using his body? If you are a bodybuilder and you are only thinking about your body and you use it the wrong way, then you will be questioned about that. You should know all that. My dear brothers and sisters, we have to understand that we are not in this world for no reason. We are here for a reason. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us for a reason. Allah says in the Quran, Allah is saying, do you think that you were created for nothing, for no reason? And, uh, or do you, you think also that you will not be returned to us? So you don't ever think like that. You have to think you are here for a reason. And the reason is very clearly, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّةِ وَالْإِنْسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That 
I realize saying I have not created the demons, the jinn, and the mankind accepted that they might worship me. And to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is both of the regular worships that we know and Allah has ordained us and also doing good things that you are using it for your worship. One thing that I would always I, I want to emphasize is that when if one of us maybe is in the summertime, you know the time even to prayer is not flexible. It takes too long to wait for the asr time. Uh, so you have to look at all oh, those are the challenges we are facing. And that may cause somebody that you went maybe for a trip, you are with friends and so on, and the prayer you miss the prayer. But we have to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us, Inna salata kanat ala mu'minina kitabun mawkutan. Indeed, the prayer is a regular, a regular time for the mankind. You have, you have, the prayer is regular and you must pray on time. So we must worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on time, all the time, and anywhere, and in any situation, wherever we are. We have to keep watching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuously and consistently, sincerely and, and seriously and thoroughly and truly throughout our lifetime. And from there we can become, uh, we can come to the level where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Wala tamufunna illa wa Do not die until you are in the state of Islam. My dear brothers and sisters, I would like to uh, request like, everybody to make a special dua for the sister who recently converted to Islam and now in the hospital is uh, serious. So uh, make a special dua for her. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a quick healing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give her paradise as she accepted Islam. Um, so uh, brothers, come in or we can start the other way. Good job, brother. <laughs>